In today's Sunrise Smart Start, there's a renewed push for mental health reform in police responses. Specifically here in New York, people got together marking four years since the death of Daniel Prude, a black man who died after police in Rochester took him into custody and pinned him to the ground in 2020. He passed away days later. His death was officially ruled a homicide. No officers, though, were charged with any crime. Over the weekend, family, the community, other officials got together for a vigil in remembrance of Prude. In Albany, these advocates continue to push for the passage of what's called Daniel's Law. It would mandate mental health professionals respond to calls for certain types of mental health crises and those dealing with substance abuse without the help of police. We have one of our members, Shaku, here as well. They're currently doing a listening tour um, to just get to know folks across the state, um, how they feel about Daniel's Law, what they'd like to see come out of the task force so that hopefully when we implement the full bill, it's something that is really grounded in community input. I'm just glad to see the community is still with me, man. That's it. I can't do nothing but take good joy in that. They still with me. I'm not by myself. Daniel's brother speaking there this month. The state Senate majority did release its one house budget resolution. That proposal included $2 million in funding to create a pilot program for Daniel's law. The state budget is due the 1st of April. A woman is still hospitalized in stable but critical condition after she was injured in a hit and run in Rochester. Police tell us that the 42 year old woman was hit by a vehicle on North Street around 10 Saturday night. That driver taking off before first responders arrived. Police say they're searching for that vehicle involved, which they believe is a white SUV. Anyone with information here, you are asked to please call 911. Police in Arondequoit need your help to find a missing man. Here's his photo there. Might be in need of medical attention. His 70-year-old Thomas Scurry hasn't been seen since Saturday when he disappeared. He had on a winter jacket and tan pants. Again, there's his photo. It's on our website. They don't believe he's in a car. He's on foot. If you have any leads that can help, know where he might be, please call 911. Turning to over-the-counter birth control, it is now available for the first time. It's been on shelves online and at some stores for about a week. You know, there might be some folks out there skeptical, thinking it might be too good to be true. So, Aron Spitzer spoke with some local doctors trying to understand how safe and effective the O-pill is. She joins us in studio with their insight. Aron. Yes, so in terms of how safe the pill is, Dr. Stacy Irusan, an OBGYN with URMC, told me if her five-year-old accidentally took the pill, she wouldn't be concerned for their well-being. The FDA approved the pill for OTC use in July, stating the drug is about 93% effective and generally safe for most people who could get pregnant. Though local doctors say when taken as directed, O-pill is 98% effective. According to the FDA, some side effects may include headaches, dizziness, nausea, and a few more common ones for hormonal-based pills, which is the most common form of birth control in the U.S. Dr. Francesca Haydanik says an over-the-counter birth control pill means more access for those who need it. Think of patients who currently don't have insurance and can't come see the doctor, patients who don't want to let other people know that they want to be on birth control. You can order this online. It's on Amazon now. So it's very accessible to many more people than having to come to my office to get a prescription is for the majority of the public. A one-month supply costs around $20, while six-month supply goes for around $90, but insurance may cover the cost of the pill depending on your plan. Guys, back to you. Ron, thanks for that insight. This week in Washington, abortion access returns before the high court nearly two years after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. What they'll be talking about and hearing arguments this time is on the abortion pill Mifepristone and whether or not to reverse the FDA's decision expanding the access to that pill. Last year, the majority of abortions were reportedly carried out using medication. Mifepristone was approved in 2000 by the FDA, but has since gone undergone additional reviews, expanding the time frame when it can be used and making it easier to obtain. The court will weigh its decision on whether or not to roll back those efforts, but if they choose to overrule the FDA, it could have larger impacts on that agency's authority regulating other prescription drugs. You don't want a group of judges substituting their own judgment for those of scientists and experts when it comes to approving any type of drug. In the end, I think the court will be reticent to really undermine the power of the FDA because they know this isn't just about mifepristone. This is also about other drugs. The justices are expected to make a decision come June if they do decide to roll back the use of mifepristone. It could still be used up to seven weeks into a pregnancy instead of the current 10, but it would also be harder to get through the mail and with telehealth appointments. 
Sunrise traffic here at just about 6.55 early on this Monday. Back for this new full work week and back for what's the last full week of school before all the kiddos have spring break. So yes, we've got the buses out there. The view from the west side. The Everything's looking okay on the expressways 390, 490, and 590. And you can see there in the corner the ballpark. We'll be counting down to Red Wings, the home opener coming up about a week from now next week, and we'll check the forecast coming up for the eight day in just a moment. First, though, we're still in the middle of hockey season. RIT is getting ready for the Division One NCAA tournament for just the fourth time in program history. The Tigers are in the 15th seed in the tourney after grabbing their first conference tournament title. Since 2016, they will go on to meet heavyweight number two seed Boston University. That first round of games being played Thursday in South Dakota. Some of the players in Rochester explained it's a very special thing going through this as they didn't realize how hard it was to make it this far until they tasted it coming up short last season. I think it's just a special thing in our walls. It's always up there. You see the pictures of people who won championships and their team and them hosting the trophy. So it's a constant reminder in the room that that stuff is hard and that's what you really want to accomplish. And uh, to be a part of the group like that, you, you create a memory like that. You're going to see a guy 30 years down the line and he'll remember this for the rest of our lives. And he'll keep us as brothers and friends. And now we're honored to be the Atlantic team representing Atlantic hockey in the for on the National Stadium, and now we're going for another ring. The next game again Thursday, puck drop at 5, played in front of a packed barn over the weekend. Told that game, sold out in about six minutes oh, for oof. RIT. Awesome. Wow. And great to see them do well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so we're uh, slowly kind of transitioning back with our weather to yeah. springtime feels this week. Mm -hmm. yes. Holy Week, Easter coming up, Good Friday too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we had Palm Sunday yesterday. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we're moving forward into a nice uh, warm stretch. Uh, we climb and climb today. We're going to add some 30 degrees to the temperature, uh, and so uh, we'll feel just lovely with mid-50s this afternoon. Staying warm overnight into the 30s. And then uh, we uh, keep it going. Tomorrow looks pretty good as well. We'll go up our 50s there. Some rain showers Tuesday night into Wednesday. But other than that, uh, looking good for most of the week. Oh, 45 Friday afternoon. Bundle up. After hey, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah, right. Everything's starting to blossom. I know. Thank you, James. And thank you for watching us here at Sunrise for Monday. We'll see you in half an hour. CBS Mornings is coming up next. Have a great day. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.